This is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, God's Church of Love Online. We're reading 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Now, the thing I want to share with you, I want you to picture something with me real quick. <clears throat> Imagine that you are trying to open a door and the doorknob is loose. The connections, the screws are loose. And you're trying to turn the doorknob and it's wiggly, wobbly, it's rattling all over the place. And let's say somebody has a temper tantrum. They get an, a flash of anger and they grab a hammer and they take that thing and they bash that doorknob. Do you know if it's a loose connection that could actually pop it right out that door? The pressure of the impact can knock the doorknob off the door. Why? The connection is loose. So I know you know where I'm going with this. How is your connection? How well, how tightly are you connected? How tightly are you screwed in to your foundation? What is your foundation? Hopefully, God in Christ, filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because see, loose connections have problems. Loose connections can cause shortages and electrical fires in a house. Loose connections can cause a tire to fall off of a car at 70 miles an hour on the freeway. And people can be highly injured or die. Loose connections cause harm. What I'm asking you is to check your connections with God. Because when you're loosely connected, check this out. This is what God showed me this morning. Picture a loose connect, a loosely connected rod, and you're holding the base. Now, imagine you're on a roller coaster ride, and this rod is in your hand. It doesn't have to be tall, but it's in your hand. Maybe it's two feet tall. You're holding the base. And the rod is not screwed in tight. And the roller coaster goes down and up and whips to the right and whips to the left. You're sitting in a chair. The base is in your hand and you're holding the base tightly. So it's not flippity floppity. But that stick has got a loose connection. Picture it in your mind. And every time you whip to the right, you whip to the left, you go up, you go down, whatever happens, that stick is going to be flipping and flopping. And, and, it, and if you're not careful, and if the connection gets looser as you go, sooner or later, that rod is liable to fly off the handle and fly off somewhere and hurt somebody. Why? Loose connection. So when you're going through the vicissitudes of life, when you're going through all types of swerves, curves, dips, potholes, problems, sudden stops, sudden starts, whatever the case may be, and you're navigating through this maze called life, you got to make sure you are tightly screwed in. You've got to make sure you are tightly connected. Because if you're not, a swerve to the right or a swerve to the left can make you lose it, baby. You will be pulling your hair out by the root. You will be overreacting to every little bump. And oh, what was that? Oh, no. It was a bump. Oh, oh, no. Check the tires. It was a dip. But when everything is loose, it feels so much worse. It makes so much more noise. You're rattled so much more because of all the loose connections. And you're afraid the car is going to fall apart. You're afraid in life, you're going to fall apart. Why? Because your connection is loose. When your connection is loose, it inspires that much more fear. 
that much more moments of panic, that much more moments of being frantic, emotionally unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And if you've got a loose rod that whips to the right, whips to the left, whips forward, whips back, is swirling around with every, every type of momentum, what you end up with is such a loose connection that it can't even hold its position. And my question to you as you go through life, can you hold your position when you're going through when life is whipping you to the right, when people are whipping you to the left, are you losing your cool, baby? Is that what you're doing? Are you flying off at, at, at the deep end? Are you losing emotional control because you're caught up in the moment? Are you double-minded? One minute you're trusting God, the next minute you're trusting what they said. You're trusting what they did. You're trusting the threats that are coming down the road. How are you being whipped? Are you shake, rattling, and rolling? What's going on in your life? Because see, when you are tightly connected, I could take my bedroom door and shake it and slam it and do whatever. If the doorknob is tightly fit, the doorknob's not going to fly off the handle. Hello. If that rod in my hand on the roller coaster ride is tightly secured in the thing I'm holding, no matter where I whip to the right, left, dip forward, fly up, whatever, that rod is going to be steady and still, just like the rod that locks you into the ride. It's not going anywhere because it's secure. It screwed in tightly to its connection. I don't care how many earthquakes you have. You're not going to have an electrical fire. Your lights aren't going to go out because all of your electrical connections are tight and secure. They're in place. They're not rattling with the earthquake. They're secure. You see, you have to double check with God every step of the way to see where your real foundational faith is. Because if your faith is not strong, you will base your decisions, you will base your reactions, you will base everything you do on exactly how you feel right now. Are you leaning to the left? Your decision will be based on that. Are you leaning on the right? Your decisions and choices will be based on that. It depends on where you're leaning. But if you are tightly secured, if you are being held by God, if your trust is steadfast, unshakable, always abounding in the work of God, you don't have to worry about a thing as the song goes. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't worry, baby. Don't worry because God is in control. Now, if you don't have God in your life, your whole life is that rod on the roller coaster with the loose connection. Your whole life is the wheel on the highway with the bolts missing and as wobbling as you're flying at 70 miles an hour. Your life is always in jeopardy. Your life is always a chance, a crapshoot, because you don't know when the next catastrophe is going to come up. You don't know when the next disaster is going to hit you. You don't know what's going and what's coming. Why? You're not tightly secured in the one who's totally in control of everything and you. The one who's totally in control of your past, present, and destiny. 
But if you have not succumbed to that control, if you have not yielded to his wisdom, to his love, to his power, and you're at your own wits, and you are going by what people say and what the news says and what your job says and what your husband says and what your child says and what he threats and she threats and the news threats and the government and whatever, you're always going to be basically a loose cannon, baby. A loose cannon. Now, I'm going to read this scripture real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 through 15. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. The bottom line, y'all, is God, not man. That's me. Verse 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. But it shall be revealed. Check this out. This is the bottom line right here. It shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, let me put that right there in chewing gum terms. You can come easy or you can come hard. So if you want to come hard, you maintain a loose connection. You hear me? You maintain a loose connection, baby. If you want to come easy, you stay tight and secure, all up under God's armpits. Whatever you got to do, ear peeled to his heartbeat. You got to stay all up on him, sit in his lap through every rough ride. Why? Because you will not be shaken. You will not be moved if you are tightly secured. But if you are not, you are the double-minded man living carnally by faith. <laughs> and you are the one the Bible describes as a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So one day you're living holy. The next day you're living like a heathen. The next day you're praying for folks to be saved. The next day you're, you're smoking pot. The next day you're gambling. The next day you're sitting up in church raising holy hands. The next day you're cussing somebody out up one end down the other. The next day you're blessing every soul that you come across. An unstable man. Unstable in all your ways. Why? Because you're still caught up in the flesh.
And when you're caught up in the flesh and you're trying to live for God, your connection is loose, baby. Loose, loose as a goose, as they say when they're talking about certain subjects, which I will not delve into right now. But the bottom line is, check your connection. Please do that. Because if you don't, you will end up like Eli and his sons. And I'm going to read that story. Because see, a lot of times, you know, we think, uh, well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Yeah, but there's an interim period that goes between saying, Lord, forgive me for my sins and the Lord calling you home. You hear me? So the interim between being saved and <laughs> being called home, you know, entering into eternity with the Lord, uh, that part right there determines how well your life is lived out. I want to I want to read this to you. And I may just tell the story. Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 3. All right. Now. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And the Lord called Samuel. He said, here am I. Now, he went to Eli three times, thinking it was Eli calling him. And Eli let him know, no, sometimes God's talking to you and you don't recognize as God's voice. Mm-hmm. See, that's what happens when you have a loose connection. He was young, so it was expected for him to have a loose connection. You have to grow into that tight connection. Life screws you in tight if you allow it. Now listen, so here's Samuel thinking it's Eli calling him when it's actually God himself. And what ends up happening? How many times has God been talking to you and you turn a deaf ear because you thought it was just, oh, I ain't listening to that. And it could have been God right there on the spot telling you, if you do this and do it that way, it's going to be way easier. But in your mind, you see how it's going to be way harder. Why? Because you're leaning to your own understanding, not going by what God says, what God's promises are. So ergo, there you are living a rougher life, living a tiring life because you're not listening to God because what he's saying does not line up with how you get it. Okay. Let me get back to the story. Okay. Now, so the Lord comes to Samuel verse 10 and the Lord came and stood and called it other times, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, speak for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of each one that heareth it shall tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. Now, check it out now. Eli was God's prophet. Hello. He was one of his servants judging Israel. Do you hear what I'm saying? his priest, whatever you want to call it, he served God in the temple. But he allowed his sons, he indulged his sons in their sins. Uh, what are you agreeing with your children on? What sinful lifestyle are you in agreement with because they're your child and you love your child? What are you accommodating that goes directly against the ways of God? Be careful with that. All right. See, that's another loose end right there. That's what you call a loose connection, a loose end. All right. Listen. So here we are. <clears throat> Verse 12, and that day I will perform against Eli all things which I've spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will make an end 
For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. Ha ha! And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. Listen, 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 listen. How many of you parents have daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, cousins, friends that need a place to stay and they want to bring their lover with them and you turn a blind eye to it? Ain't no telling what's going on in that bedroom, not only sexually speaking, but whatever else they may be into. They're bringing a curse into your house that should be blessed and dedicated to God. But you're making allowances. You're accommodating. And you accommodate so much, so long. You accommodate so many things for too long. And then one day God says, my spirit will not always strive with you. And you start to wonder why things are unraveling in your life. God is not the author of confusion. So if you find confusion all around you, it's time to stop, be still, consult with God and say, Lord, is there anything I may be doing that contributes to this chaos I'm living in? Why do I say that? Here's why. 14. Therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Basically, he goes to Eli with the vision. Eli tells him, you better tell me or worse going to happen to you if you don't tell me. So Samuel tells him, verse 18, every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Now let's move on down to chapter four. And this is where some of you question why, why, why is all this coming against me? Why is all this coming against my children? Why is all this coming against my finances? Why is all this coming against my body? Whatever the case may be. Listen to this. Hmm. You're, you're burying Uncle Sam. You're burying uh, Sister Paul. I mean, Sister Paula. You're burying Cousin Sheila. You're, 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 you're burying your grandchild. Your, your, your great grandchildren. Uh, miscarriage after miscarriage. And you're wondering, what is this all about, Alfie? All right. So what happens is, let's go down a little further. Because we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant and all that. But what I want to get down to. Whew, all right. Verse 11. And the Ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. Now, what you don't know is they were tampering with the offerings to the Lord. They were tampering with the sacrifices. They were taking the meat, the choice foods. They were raping the women and forcing them into sexual promiscuity. They were doing all kind of stuff to desecrate the people's offerings to the Lord, bringing them to the temple. Now, Eli, loving his sons, he fussed, but he didn't take action. So let's see, how can I get to this? I want to tell this without taking too much time because y'all get bored with the word, unfortunately. All right, 15. Now Eli was 90 and eight years old and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army and I fled today of the army. And he said, what is there done, my son? 
And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. What does loose, what do loose connections bring into your life? Defeat. All right. All right. Let me keep reading. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. Death. Hmm. Presence of the Lord lifting off. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off his seat backward by the side of the gate. His neck break and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel 40 years. Now, he was a judge assigned by God. And look at what happened at his end. Because he wouldn't take action. He made allowances. Verse 19. And his daughter-in-law. Here we go with the relatives now. Phineas' wife was with child, she was pregnant, near to be delivered. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed for her pains, her labor pains, came upon her. Verse 20, and about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel. Her heart was broken, baby. But being in that family, she suffered loss of her own life check it out because the ark of god she said the glory of god is departed that's what ichabod means you do not want god's word over your life spoken as ichabod you do not want that the glory is departed from israel because the ark of god was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband and she said, the glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. So what I want you to see is she was basically on her deathbed. She was dying when she said that. The thing you don't get is what God warned Eli about it, and what he warns us about. When we allow all this stuff, you know, the world is changing, so we got to we gotta flow with the, you know, go with the flow and, and, and be flexible with all the changes. No, you don't, baby. Because you could be bringing the curse of short lives, short-lived lives, people in your family dying, short lives, having financial crisis after financial crisis, sickness after sickness after sickness, death after death after death. You could be opening Pandora's box into your life by forcing Ichabod over your household. You do not want to feel the presence of God leave you. You don't want that. See, a lot of you think once saved, always saved. But there are scriptures, and I will add them in the video for the sake of time. I don't have time to preach all of that now. I'll add them in the video when I upload this video, take the time to read those scriptures that tell you that just cause you win don't mean you get to stay in. Just because you've won doesn't mean that that's the end of your story. Because just like you won, you can lose. You can lose out on everything God has for you. So my point to you is do not. Do not live out your life with loose connections. Do not live out your life living like the world on one side, making allowances for sins, 
And then expecting God to turn a blind eye and wink at it because you're in Christ. You talk in tongues. You're filled with the Holy Ghost. That with a mighty burning fire. And when you pray for this one or you or you do something for that one, God's anointing is on you. But then the next minute you turn around, you're cussing somebody out at the store. You're telling somebody off at your job. You're blowing somebody up on the bus. Hmm. You're treating the server at the restaurant like they're your bellhop, like they're dirt under your shoe. Because you don't like the way they look. Because they looked at you funny. Because they talk funny. Because they're the wrong color. Whatever the case is, baby, God is taking, he's looking, he's booking, and he's taking notes. And you think that because you haven't been punished yet, you ain't going to be. Mm. All I can say is tighten your connection now. You want to hear from God. You want to be led by him. You want to be moved by him and you want his favor on your life. You want his presence. You want him to want to be close to you because of your hunger for him and his righteousness. And for those of you who don't know the Lord, you don't even have a connection. I ask you, come into him now, baby. Let him come in and sup with you. He's at the door knocking. Don't ignore it, because tomorrow's not promised. Tonight is not promised. To you or your children or your relatives or your families or your whole well-being. Nothing is promised. All right. I'm not trying to fuss. I get animated <clears throat> when I get <laughs> adamant about what I'm saying. So forgive me for that. But just understand, God's not a play toy. He's not in one moment out the next. He is steadfast, unmovable. And you have got to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not here one day, off the next, not in one, and you're out the next, and you're, you're tight one day, and you don't know who God is the next, and you're acting like a saint one day, and you're acting like a fool, the devil's fool the next, and folks don't even know if you're saved, and oh, you don't even know who you are. No, no, you don't want to live an unstable life. And you do not want your life and your emotions driven by the winds of the, of the weather that life blows in. You want to be unmovable, unshakable, steadfast. Amen? Stay in the word. Pray. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Live a life of holiness. Put God first in everything. I don't care what your flesh is yearning for. Put God first in everything. When he sees that kind of perseverance, you'd be shocked at the blessings that he gives you that a lot of people don't get. Why? Because of your steadfastness, baby. He will put you in a large place. No matter how the devil tries to come against you, it'll fall by the wayside, but you'll be there standing strong because you're securely, tightly screwed in and connected with Almighty God. God bless you. Hi, Pat. I just wanted to say that uh, your sermon was very much a confirmation of a message I got approximately a month ago. And my message uh, was maybe one paragraph. So I'd like to, to say what this message is so that you can see how close it was with your message. Your sermon was very much a confirmation of the message I, I received about a month ago. And it was called Golf Balls Aren't Used with Tennis Rackets. And uh, this was given to me in January 9th of 23. And here it goes. Certain things go with certain items. Not everything is supposed to work together symbiotically. 
we are children of the Most High God. We were made to work symbiotically with God. All our parts connect directly and interface with him. We may or may not know it, but when we are apart from him, we do not run optimally. It's like putting in the wrong size screw to hold something together. It will not work at all or it will work poor, poorly for a while. Each of us are made to interconnect with God, be part of him or be part of his glory. We need to realize that we are only partially complete and in need of repairs. Only God can fine-tune us. I love it. I could, I could see the connection, pardon the pun. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was great. Excellent. 